Are you stupid or something? You probably are, and buddy, that's all right. You're in the right place to learn some stuff, so stick around and you just might. My name is not me, and I'll be asking some cues, and at the end you'll be riddled with A's. You might score real high, but even if not, you'll sure be glad you played. If you're looking for prizes, just move along, there's no money for you to earn. You win by trying and doing your best, your prize is the stuff you learn. If you want to be an artist, you have to know all you can about the world of art. So engage with this quiz and at the end you'll say, I am smart. I am not me. I am art. And I am your host. Mmm, your host. For I am smart. The quiz show where people compete to improve themselves and improve their art through learning and strive to earn the right to say, yeah, baby, I am smart. Quiz is very simple, very straightforward. We've got three rounds of questions. We've got three musings to test out your imaginosphere and a bonus two-point question at the end. 20 points overall. That's what we're working towards. That's the absolute top whack you can get. But... Whatever you get, it's about whether you feel smart, yeah? There's no point thresholds here, ladies and gentlemen. No point thresholds here whatsoever. All you're going to need for this quiz is something to write with, something to write on. It could be a pen and paper. It could be a phone and a thumb. Or four fingers. I've seen some people do it. They tend to be older people, but that's absolutely fine. And most importantly, a brain for thinking and an imaginosphere for imagining, because both will be tested here today. Optional beverage um we do like to uh share in a uh, a unified uh act right at the start right at the top of the uh, quiz just to to bring us all together as one because we've got a, a whole world of fans out there how many have we got so far two currently but there's you know they could be from anywhere if one of them's from china and the other one's from new zealand then my gosh who knows what we're going to do. But to bring everybody together, unified, we take a swig, we have a cheers. Yeah? We take a swig, we have a cheers. That's what's going on. That's what's happening. So if we'd all raise our glasses. To the rain. For reminding us all that some days it's good to head inside. Yeah? Some days... It's not good to walk out in the in the world today. Some days, it's time to stay indoors and quiz, because then that really boosts up my my viewing totals. Yeah, which is really what this is all about. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. Got to double dip for that first one, guys. You have to double dip. It's kind of the rules. <laughs> Hello, Smarties. So who do we have? Who do we have? Not that many people so far. Not that many people so far. That's absolutely fine. Vix84. Vix84 has followed. Uh, and if Vix84 is still watching, thank you very much to Vix. Uh, but we do have SJBEX72 in the chat. Hello to you. And we do have uh, TB Douglas in the chat. Hello to you. Who was the high point scorer last week? Uh, or two weeks ago, guys? Who was the high point scorer? I have kind of forgotten who the high point scorer was. Um, was it, was it UTB? You're on a bit of a, uh, on a bit of a tear recently, aren't you? It might have been me. It's bank holiday over here, so people could be away. Thank you very much, SJ Beck, uh, 72. Appreciate that context. Um, it does help to salve my ego. Um, yeah, I think it was UTB. I think it was UTB, which means that you, of course, get to choose one of our lovely rounds uh, and we will definitely play it. Um, so let's see what rounds you have to choose from today. T.B. Douglas. What's in the docket? We've got Look Close. We've got Haikus Day. We've got Iconic Art. We've got Nart. We've got Alpha Bart. Red Herring. Give me five. Not Me Wood. Who that artist? Spotlight. Yay or nay? And the movie ladder. T.B. Douglas wants to go. Give me five. And T.B. Douglas shall get. Give me five. That's absolutely fine. But, of course, we've got two more rounds. Two more rounds to choose. And we've got to choose them, of course, from the I Am Smart round selector. I've used invisible paint for some of these. No, that's just green. It's interrupting with the uh, green screen. Uh, so let's see, uh, let's see what rounds we're going to pick to go along with Gimme 5. You all ready? 
Let's quiz. Timing worked out pretty well with that one. I'm pretty pleased with my little pose at the end there. It was absolutely on the money. Um, so our rounds this week. We have it official. We are doing Alpha Bart. We are doing Red Herring. Uh, and we are doing Gimme Five. Let me have a little look at these just to see if I can order them. So what have we got? Gimme Five. Yeah, that's pretty good. We've got Red Herring. Mm, that's real nice. Alpha Bart. Ooh, that could be quite interesting. I think we'll finish with Gimme Five. I think maybe we're going to start with Alpha Bart. Are we going to start with Alpha Bart? Guys, let's just kick in. We've doubled our viewers, guys. We're on four. That means we're kicking off. It's, it's getting hot. It's getting hot and heavy in here. Let's go alphabetically. Alphabet guys at some point, you know, it's lovely picking and choosing but at some point we just need to go through Every piece of art in the world with this quiz We just need to catalog all of them and the only way to do that that I know of Is to go alphabetically. So I'm going to ask you five questions Let's get these in the chat uh, I'm going to ask you five questions and the answers to all of these questions are going to begin with the same letter that letter that we're working with this week is E is E hmm um, so if this is uh, names then E will be the first letter of the surname of the first part of the surname okay as it says in the example Sasha Baron Cohen that begins with B for the for the purposes of this round. Okay? Five questions, five answers, all beginning with E. And then the musing will be something to do something that begins with E as well. So let's get started. Let's get started, guys. Here we go. Question number one. Which song by the police formed the basis of Puff Daddy's nineteen ninety seven song, I'll Be Missing You? I'll be missing you. Puff Daddy came out in 1997 with I'll Be Missing You, heavily featured, um, for the chorus at least, part of a uh, police song that begins with E. Um, and in, uh, There's a, a lovely bit of trivia with regard to that that I'll be uh, telling you at the end that you will, uh, I think you'll struggle to believe. I'll struggle, I struggle to believe it when I heard it as well, but we'll see, we'll see. Question number two. Which park in Walt Disney World was originally conceived by Walt Disney as a utopian city of the future? What do we think? What do we think? What do we think? Which park in Walt Disney World was originally conceived by Walt Disney? The late, great Walt Disney. Of course, he's dead now, but still as a utopian city of the future. What do we think? What do we think? Question number three. What is the name of the character played by Jim Varney across nine family comedy films between 1986 and 1998? What is the name of the character played by Jim Varney across nine family comedy films between 1986 and 1998? Even if the name doesn't ring a bell, let's think about that letter. 
Let's think about family comedy films that may have had nine installments. Question number four. What is the name of the third book in the Twilight Saga where Bella finally decides she's hashtag Team Edward? This feels like quite tall. I need to get quite close in here. What is the name of the third book in the Twilight Saga where Bella finally decides that she is hashtag Team Edward and not, of course, hashtag Team Jacob? Everybody's day is going well. It is very rainy here in New York City. But uh, it's nice and cozy when, when you're quizzing. Warm and cozy. Warmed by the fire of knowledge. Final question. Which member of the rap group NWA, and I will not be telling you what that stands for, lost his life to AIDS in 1995? Such a terrible disease. Such a terrible disease. First we lost Freddie to it. And then we lost one of the members of the rap group, NWA. <sighs> Sometimes you've just got to take a moment, haven't you? Sometimes you've just got to take a moment. And that is the final question. If any of you need any of those questions again, don't hesitate to let me know in the chat. But for now, mmm, need to get on with amusing. Amusing. Need to test that imaginary sphere just as much as the brain. And here we go. What feature or quality would you most like humans to evolve? That's the E word here. Evolve. Obviously, evolution is just a theory. Some people say, some people have a counter theory that it was just God, which is absolutely fair enough, because nobody really knows. I mean, that's what a theory is. That's what theories are for. You have a theory. I have a theory. Let's just do our best. Let's just do our best. But if humans would be, uh, oh, T.B. Douglas, and our answer should begin with E also? No. No, this Disregard, the E is coming from this. The E is coming from this. Feel free to uh, 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 utilize all 26 characters in the uh, Western English alphabet um, with your answer. That's a great question, TB, and I'm happy to answer it. Um, yes, whatever you want, the answer to this. The E is taken care of. I've taken care of the E, guys. You don't need to worry about the E. That's only for all the other ones. Or should that be a good... That's quite interesting, actually, TB. You've brought up a good point. What if the musings for the alphabet rounds were slightly vaguer because then the specificity comes from having to answer... Hmm. That's interesting. That's something to... That's something to... For me to ponder around there, TB. Thank you so much. Beginning with the F round that's coming... Very, very soon, because these are quite easy rounds to write, so there's always going to be an alpha bot. Uh, and that's the first round done, guys. That's the first round done. Nice and easy, easing us in, okay? How is everybody doing? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw in a little... Oh, I, can't, I can't do an advert? I can't do an advert? I was going to do an advert. I hope everybody's doing well. We're up to eight viewers. We're doing well, guys. We're doing well. If you haven't said hello in the chat, please do say hello. Hello. I love to see everybody there and uh, be able to, to to welcome you and to thank you, really, for uh, for getting involved with the quiz. Please do let me know. Just a simple hey. Or uh, if you do an emote, then it will come up on the screen. That's your call, though. Don't let me, uh, come around, George. Hello there, George. I'd ask how you are, but I know how you are from our conversations 
earlier today. Well, for those who, who are interested, he's doing well. He's doing well. We watched Seven last night, didn't we, cameraman George? Watched the David Fincher film Seven. Um, and it's not, it's, I will, I will say it's, it's not a, it's not a laugh filled two hours, but, um, a very rewarding one, very rewarding one. The villain is Kevin Spacey. The clues were there. The clues were there. Uh, so what are we doing next? We are going on, we're going from Alphabet on to, wait, what was the next one? That was Red Herring, wasn't it? Yeah, we'll go red herring next, I think. Red herring next. Lovely stuff. Lovely, lovely stuff. Where are we, red herring? Hey, baby. Red herring here. Um, where, of course, uh, you need to identify when you are examining art, when you're thinking about art, you need to be able to identify odd ones out. You know, sometimes you need to, there's one there that's just a little bit off and you need to be able to identify that. You need to be able to, yeah? So I'm going to give you some answers here. I'm going to give you all of the answers to these questions, but I'm going to give you one extra. That's going to be the red herring. Oh, I should just do the thing, shouldn't I? All the instructions are in the chat. So our topic this week, our topic for this round of red herring Music festivals. Oh, that's an interesting category, not me. Thank you so much, guys. I appreciate you. Uh, I appreciate the thought there. I agree. I absolutely agree. Um, there we are. Okay, good. Um, so each of these uh, answers is going to be a music festival. We're just going to test your knowledge of them. We're just going to test your knowledge of them. Uh, so let's start with this one, and then this one, then this one, this one, this one, and this one. So we've got... The Danube Island Festival in Austria. We've got Altamont in the USA. We've got Glastonbury in the UK. We've got Woodstock in the USA. We've got Lollapalooza from the USA. And we've got Fuji Rock from Japan. Some you may be familiar with. Some you may be not so familiar with. But makes it easier because these are the answers. I've given you the answers. I've gone as far as I can for you guys. The rest is up to you. Let's go with question one here. Which festival's first year ticket price included free milk? One of these festivals. This, the answer's right here. One of these festivals' first year ticket price when you bought a ticket to that festival. They said, let's go and see some music and here's some free milk for one of these. Which one is it? I'm going to go through these quite quickly. Um, and then go through them again, because I think that is helpful in this round. Uh, question number two. Which festival began, began as a farewell tour for the band Jane's Addiction? Jane's Addiction. What do we think? What do we think? Oh, that connection is looking pretty sketchy at the moment. Apologies, guys. Question number three. Which festival's 1969 Jimi Hendrix Sunday headline performance was postponed till 9 a.m. the following morning due to technical difficulties? Gosh, you'd be annoyed. You would be rather miffed, wouldn't you? You would be rather miffed. Uh, question number four. Which festival's 2015 event drew a Guinness World Record Festival crowd of 3.3 million people? 3.3 million people. To the 2015 event of which festival? 2015 uh, iteration, could you say? I suppose you could. Of which of these festivals? And then the final question. Which festival's first year was marred by a typhoon? Hmm. 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 Let's go through those questions again. Now that you've seen all of them, you can start to apply things a little bit more cogently. Uh, which festival's first year's ticket price included free milk? What was it? What was it? Which festival began as a farewell tour for the band Jane's Addiction? JRPV20, hello to you. Hmm, this is very tricky. Well... Do it your best. 
all of the answers are here. I've given you the answers. I'm not... <laughs> I'm not sure how I could have made it easier. Question number three. Which festival's 1969 Jimi Hendrix Sunday headline performance was postponed till 9am the following morning due to technical difficulties? Which one of these? Which one of these? It's one of them. I'll tell you that for free. Uh, question number four. Which festival's 2015 event drew a Guinness World Record festival crowd of 3.3 million people? And then the final question. Which festival's first year was marred by a typhoon? What do we think? What do we think? Marred by a typhoon. Some you know, some you probably don't, but you can have a guess. You can have a guess. That's the joy of this one, because these are the answers. Um, so let's get rid of these answers now in a random order so you don't know which one is which. This and then this and then this. As we go for our m m m m m m m m musing, and it is, of course, oh, this is a good one, and I'm excited about this one, guys. In your dream music festival, who is headlining Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night? You've got a long weekend of festivaling. It'll probably start on the Thursday, but that's largely just for people to get their bearings. Get their tents set up. Get their bearings. Work out where the toilets are. Work out where the good toilets are. See if there are any particularly dirty parts of the uh, area that you just think, I'm probably going to give them a, a wide berth. And then the real stuff kicks off on Friday. We're going to have some lovely stuff on Friday, lovely stuff on Saturday, lovely stuff on Sunday. Hog roast on Sunday, apparently. Um, some stuff for the kiddies. I mean, that will depend on your... I mean, it's your music festival. I don't know why I'm telling you this. No need to tell you about my... Uh, my one I'm just I'm, you know you tell me about yours Friday night Saturday night Sunday night who are the headliners yeah who's sending your festival crowd off happy into their tents you tell me as we head back to Maine my goodness let's head back to Maine how exciting how is everybody doing is everybody enjoying things is everybody having a great, great time? I feel like you probably are. I mean, you're not saying that you are, but I'm guessing you probably are. Oh, gosh. Daniel Swan redeemed Finding Jesus. Be right back. Here is Jesus, was just chilling out, sleeping, maxing all, relaxing all, chilling on some meatballs outside of school. And a couple of guys who were up to no good started making trouble in his neighbourhood. Which was me, because I just picked him up. Okay, obligation fulfilled. Ah, and there we go. That is, uh, so that is one of the new, uh, um, uh, rewards that you can redeem. Um, Uncool Town was complaining the other week that, uh, there wasn't anything to spend drops of Imaginosphere on, which is fair enough. There used to be more things to spend them on, um, 
during the most week show. Uh, but less of them applied to the quiz. So I was scratching the old brain box, came up with a couple, one of which is Finding Jesus. So at any point throughout the show, I think you know you do it once. At, no, you can do it once every 45 minutes, I think, because um, you don't want to bother him too much. But at any point, you can redeem 1,000 drops of Imaginosphere, uh, and I will go and I will find him wherever he is in my flat. Uh, and I'll pick him up, I'll bring him to you, I will show him to you, and I'll just pop him back again, because, you know what, he was living his own life. He was living his own life. Um, <laughs> there we go, let's get on with the last round, which was, of course, T.B. Douglas's choice. Round of applause, T.B. Douglas. It's Gimme Five. <laughs> the world of art is unfair, guys. It's absolutely unfair. People always want more. The algorithm wants more. The audience wants more. It's unfair, sure. But that's art, baby. So to help prepare you for that, I'm about to ask you one question. But I'm asking for five answers, yeah? That's unreasonable. Very reasonable for me. Again, it makes it a very easy quiz round to write. But it's tough for you. Let's just get on with our quiz. Let's just get on with our quiz. I'm asking you to give me five original Pixar films since 2005. Sounds easy. It's actually a little bit trickier than you might think. Actually a little bit trickier than you might think. So this is original films. Don't give me any sequels. Please don't give me any sequels. I really, I, I'm not sure I could handle it if you gave me any sequels. Um, the last one that you couldn't choose, the last film of 2004, is The Incredibles. So we're looking for anything post The Incredibles. Original Pixar films. Give me five of them. If you give me three of them, you're going to get three points. If you give me four of them, you're going to get four points five you'll get the full five if you give me six you'll get five points but you will get some croc points you will get some croc points what are croc points it's in the chat it's in the chat guys it's in the chat give me five original pixar films since 2005 am i being cruel with this no there's lots, there's lots of them. There's lots of them. I was going to do it since 2010, but that would have been a little bit trickier. I'm going to give you some films that you can't have. I'm going to give you some films that you can't have. Toy Story 3, get it out of here. Cars 2, done. Monsters University. The sequel to Monsters Inc. Get rid. I don't want. I don't want it. Finding Dory. No, thank you. How many do we have? How many do we have to pick? One, two, three. There's twelve. There's a dozen of them that have been released. Okay. There's a dozen of them that have been released. So I'm not even asking you for half of the ones that there are. There's plenty here. Plenty. Uh, M. Acton. Hi guys. Uh, hello, Smarties. My phone died, so we are late, but we're here now. Better late than never. Join just in time. You could say this is our specialist subject. I'm I'm very pleased, M. Acton. Very pleased. If you wish, as there are not that many people watching, at the grand total of seven at the moment, uh, if you wish, I'll give the answers quite slowly to give you <laughs> five seconds to answer them. It'll be pretty quick, but... Do you know what I mean? That's that's as good as I can do in the circumstances. But thank you very much for joining on a bank holiday weekend. I'll give you another minute with these. Five original Pixar films since 2005. Is it difficult? Is it not? I don't know. It's so tricky to gauge what is easy and what is not easy. It's a challenge, whatever it is. It's a challenge, whatever it is. Uh, 
And there we go. And there we go. We need amusing, though. We need amusing. You know we do, baby. You were waiting for it just as much as I was. And the amusing for this round, Pixar can make it a powerful, life-affirming, heartwarming film about anything. Toys, monsters, superheroes, insects, etc. None of which you can choose. I was very I was very careful with these. Super the Incredibles can't have. Bugs Life, no. Monsters, Inc., no. Toy Story, no. So you're not getting any help on that one, guys. Got to wake up pretty early to get one over on old not me. What's a type of character they haven't yet made a film about that you'd like to see? Feel free to give it a name. You can give it a name if you want, guys. I'm certainly not going to stop you doing that. Give me a group of a group of things that Pixar could make a film about that they have not, as of yet, made a film about. And give it a name. Give it a name. Give that film a name. We'll see if we can uh, muse around some kind of plot. But that's it, guys. That's three rounds up, three rounds down. You've done well. I'm proud of you guys. I'm real proud of you, yeah? Apologies if there are any uh, issues vis-a-vis -vis bit rate. I restarted the internet. I've done absolutely everything I can. That is just on Spectrum, guys. And do not dare blame me. Um... I hope you're enjoying the quiz. I hope you're having fun. Uh, TB, I believe, earlier said that it was quite tricky. Seems okay to me. Thank you, George. JRPV20 said it was tricky. TB Douglas said it was tricky. So we could be looking at some low scores, but it's equal for everybody. That's the joy of the Not Me quiz, and all quizzes to a lesser extent, is that, do you know what? Everyone's on the same playing field. Everyone's, everyone's facing the same questions. Everyone's just doing their best. And if I'm asking you questions about music festivals, and you've never even heard of any of the music festivals, is it fair to expect for me to expect you or for you to expect yourself to be able to answer any of them? Mm, no. Give yourself a break, guys. Jeez. Give yourself a break. As we go in for some answers, should we do some answers? What was the first round that we did? Oh, we did Alphabet, didn't we? Yeah, let's go some answers. Let's go for some answers. Where are we? Alphabet, here we go. Here we go. The musing, of course. What feature or quality would you most like humans to evolve? That's what I want from you. Which feature or quality would you most like humans to evolve? Don't say it out loud, guys. I can't hear it. You've got to get it in the chat. There are some little bonus ones in the chat as well there. There is a That Is Art. There is a Jesus. And there is a Not Me as well. Let's go for question number one. Question number one. Which song by the police formed the basis for Puff Daddy's 1997 song, I'll Be Missing You? 54321 for M. Acton. It is, of course... Every breath you take. Every breath you take. One point for each of these correct answers. All of the answers, of course, beginning with E. I should have mentioned that maybe for uh, M. Acton there. But never mind. Question number two. Uh, which park in Walt Disney World was originally conceived by Walt Disney? as a utopian city of the future. It was, of course, Epcot. Epcot. It stands for something, but bug it if I could tell you what it is. Well done if you got that one right. Question number three. What is the name of the character played by Jim Varney across nine, nine family comedy films between 1986 and 1998? The answer is, of course... Ernest P. Worrell. I will give you Ernest. Of course I will. Ernest goes to whatever. Let's have a look. Let's see what they are. Uh, 
Ernest films. Ernest scared stupid. Ernest saves Christmas. Ernest goes to camp. Ernest goes to jail. Ernest rides again. Ernest in the army, etc., etc., etc. Well done if you got that one right. It could be quite tricky, I think. But it's the kind of thing that I think is probably quite tricky to name, but then when I say it, you'll be like, oh, yeah, I should have got that one. Those are frustrating questions, and I apologize for posing them to you. But also, I'm here to test you guys, yeah? I'm not here to hold your hands. I'm not here to make, well, I am here to make friends. Fans, even more important than friends. Uh, number four, what is the name of the third book in the Twilight Saga where Bella, the, the uh, not titular or eponymous, but just the lead character, the protagonist, Bella, finally decides she is Team Edward. It is, of course, Eclipse. Twilight colon Eclipse. Well done to all of you YA novel fans out there uh, of all ages. And number five, which member of the rap group NWA lost his life to AIDS in 1995? And this is a bit of a, a, a double bubble for you. This is a double uh, E. It is, of course, Easy e Easy e from NWA died from AIDS. Well done if you got that. The correct answer, of course, not AIDS. Woof. Don't want that. Nasty, nasty thing. Uh, so let's go back to the musing. What feature or quality would you most like humans to evolve? Let's have a look. Let's have a look. SJ Beck 72, Patience. Wowzers! What a philosophical answer there, SJBX72. What a philosophical answer there. And perhaps, if I may, born of an anecdotal experience that you've had with somebody who didn't have patience. Is it maybe that, SJBX72? Were you maybe at a cash point and having to do something that, you know, you're very... It's very possible to do with a cash point or an ATM, but does just take a few more presses of a button than other people would like. Depositing a check, perhaps. Changing your pin. I don't know if that's possible, actually, on an ATM. But doing something, you know, rerouting some of your money to go to whatever it is. Managing your direct debits. I don't know what it is. And then the person behind huffing and puffing, titting and tutting, and you say, gosh, can you just have a little patience, please? Have a little bit of empathy. Because we, we all go through this, yeah? We all go through this. Would that they could all have patience, though, SJBX72. A fine point. TB Douglas, the ability to hibernate in the winter. Now we are talking. The ability to hibernate in the winter. So TB Douglas... One would assume, therefore, bit of a sun seeker, bit of a uh, bit of a hot weather aficionado. Not a big fan of the cold. Not a big fan of the snow. Not a big fan of those icy, biting winds that often whip through and can really let you know. Gosh, these trousers are thinner than I thought they were. But yeah, the ability to hibernate in the winter. I can, as I think now, I can only think of two animals that do hibernate in the winter bears and tortoises and i'm not sure if there's anything else that connects those two but that sounds like a fun fun group to be a part of you know like when you look at your country on a list and you look at all the lists of like happiest uh, uh best paid um uh most healthy and it's always the Scandinavian countries at the top. It's always Iceland and Sweden and Finland. They're all do living their best life. They're all having a lot of fun. And you look at it and you think, gosh, that's a group I'd like to be in. That's a group I'd, I think I could really do some good in. And I think that would really do me some good to be hanging around that, you know, good influences. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel like it would be for hibernation vis-a-vis -vis it's humans, it's bears, it's tortoises. And we're just hanging out and having fun, yeah. Can you say? Can you say screenplay? <laughs> Great choice, TB. Uh, Camera George to be able to fly. Wowzers! Less need for cars, bikes, etc. Absolutely. Although neither of them can fly. Although yes, absolutely, you could fight it. Yes, you. Because that's the thing. People always talk about flying. Oh, I'd love to fly through the sky. 
Very chilly up there, I will say. Very chilly up there. A very useful form of flying would be just about two feet off the ground. Just hovering. Just... If I can, if I can take a little Lego chap here. To, it's just a rocker guy. It's just a rocker guy. Wow, why is the yellow interfering with the green screen? That's strange. So rather than... And then let's go... Let's go with a little remote here. So most people flying, it's, it's wow. Oh, I want to fly in the sky. Superman style. I'm saying we're flying, but we're flying here. Yeah. And we're just leaning. It's like, it's like human flying segways, essentially. It's just like, I'm kind of a human segway and I'm whipping along and I'm getting places lickety split. There's not really any need for cars. Cars are now just to preserve exclusively of, uh, you know, men who are petrol heads, those kinds. And they don't even need to drive them. They can just clean them and look at them. That's pretty much the main thing. And then sometimes get in, turn the engine on, to, but it's just to impress their friends. And they go, ow, 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 ow. and their friends go, gosh. Geordie, that's really that sounds very powerful. They say, yeah, it's like a million horsepower. Or I don't know cars, but yeah, those those are the only reasons you wouldn't even need don't need tires, don't need tires on the cars anymore because they're just things to keep in your garage, polish, and then just ram 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 because you because we've got all these human segways. Uh, M Acton. The ability to store... I say why cameraman George is done it, because he doesn't have his driver's license. Doesn't have his driver's license. That's probably why cameraman George has picked that. Uh, M. Acton, the ability to store more teasers in your cheeks for future eating without them ever melting. That's lovely, like a hamster. I do like slightly melted Maltesers, but I want them to melt on my terms. And for God's sake, why wouldn't you? Absolutely, on your terms, M. Acton. That's lovely stuff. A slightly melted Malteser, but so what? So what would that entail? Let's think this through, guys. Let's think this through. Let's not dive into this willy nilly. So you're storing Maltesers in your cheeks for future eating. So a, we're having to co counteract how much you want to eat those Maltesers, which is almost overwhelming. I'm almost shaking now thinking of Maltesers, and there's not even any in this flipping country. You're also having to overcome the heat from your cheeks, your cheek heat. Yeah. And so you'd need to evolve some kind of uh some kind of system. So maybe these aren't in the cheeks, but maybe these are separate parts outside the cheeks. And it would be like um may let's think. Let's think. Just to keep them cool, it would be like having facial scrota, yeah, much as gentlemen have for their for their beans. It would be you'd have your regular cheeks, but then you'd have maybe some like subsidiary ones down here that would be cooler, maybe dangle down, and and they wouldn't be they wouldn't interfere as much uh, or be interfered with as much by the um, uh, by the cheek heat. That you need, you need that cheek heat, and so maybe it's like there, it, there would be the the cheek wall, and then there'd be a kind of you know, because you would need to create a division between the between the mouth and the facial scrota, the the Malteser bag essentially, the little for the to have the little Maltesers in. So you'd need to create some kind of sphincter between the mouth. And the uh, little Maltese, little little chocolate balls, little ball bag on the side of your face. Yeah? Maltese sack. Maltese, uh, it's got to be a nicer way of putting it. What's a synonym for... Synonym for sack. Bag, pack, pouch. Gunny. Not sure I like that. Any coarse uh, North American English coarse fabric, typically made of jute fiber and especially used for sacks. Nah. Pouch, I quite like pouch. Purse. So it'd be like little Malteser purses on the side of it. I think I think we I think we're getting somewhere there. 
I think we're really finding some some joy there. It's really got me thinking though. I'll draw out some blueprints. Uh, JRPV20 evolve an actual radar for compatibility, so there will be far less awkward first dates, far fewer um, awkward first dates. Absolutely, that's a really yeah, that's lovely. People talk about gaydar, and that's all well and good. But what if that could a uh, apply to all preferences, all uh, 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 romantic identities, if I may? But B, that's just saying, is this person gay or is this person straight? But this is saying an actual radar for, like, who's into me. And it would, I don't know whether that would be with a, an interesting series of clicks or whether compatibility could be determined by somebody's density. And so the clicks that you were making would re reflect back in a certain would we so you'd so you'd have to say what kind of density i mean i think we still need to work on it jpv20 but i think there's definitely something there i think there's definitely something there an actual radar for compatibility that's nice that's nice and you know what guys if you wrote something down whether it's malteser purses or patience you get a point well done well done. Let's go on to the next one. Let's go on to the next one. We're moving now. Red herring. Here we go. The musing was, of course, in your dream. Music festival. Who is headlining a Friday, a Saturday, and a Sunday night? Don't say it out loud, guys. Get it in the chat. Get it in the chat, please. Get it in the chat. All I can think of is Malteser purses now. That's all I can think of. Is there anything else that that would work with? It's largely for confectionery, isn't it? It's mostly chocolate. It's a chocolate purse. That sounds worse, though. Uh, question number one. Oh, no, we need the answer, don't we? Of course, because there's a red herring round. Uh, that's an answer. That's an answer. That's an answer. Here's an answer. This one and also this one. Thank you, JRPV20. Appreciate that um, double dipping on that. Just to, Just to confirm. Really nice stuff. Really nice emote work. Normally our chief emotist, I believe, is uh, Maple Panda. But Maple Panda doesn't seem to be here today. Um, so thank you for picking up the slack. Question number one. Which festival's first year's ticket price included free milk? Gosh, free milk. That sounds weird. That sounds really weird. And it is really weird. But the answer is... The one that's on a farm. It is, of course, Glastonbury. Oh, I can't do that. No, because I, uh, if I double-click, then it goes into the thing. Okay, so that was Glastonbury. Well done if you got that one right. Question number two. Which festival began as a farewell tour for the band Jane's Addiction? They are a Chicago-based band. And Chicago is the base for Lollapalooza. Well done if you got that one right. Question number three. Which festival's 1969 Jimi Hendrix Sunday headline performance was postponed till 9 a.m. the following morning due to technical difficulties? The answer is, of course, Woodstock. Woodstock. I have to toggle the visibility a little bit slower, otherwise it does. Assume I've double-clicked and it opens up a edit thing. Okay, and then question number four. Which festival's 2015 event drew at a Guinness World Record festival crowd of 3.3 million people? It is the Danube Island Festival in Austria. Who saw that coming? More people than any other festival in Austria. It's a beautiful country, so I hear. Beautiful country. Uh, and the final question, which festival's first year was marred by a typhoon? Was it Altamont or was it Fuji Rock? Well, Altamont's first year was marred by a typhoon of violence, um, but not an actual typhoon. That was, of course, Fuji Rock in Japan, which means that this week's red herring was Altamont. Was Altamont. Well done if you got those right. That can be quite tricky. Um, so, uh, well done if you did uh, manage to pick up some points there. If you got zero points, that's almost just as impressive. 
because I gave you the answers. Uh, let's get on with the musing, though. In your dream music festival, who is headlining Friday, Saturday, and Sunday night? JRPV20, let's have a look. Let's have a look. JRPV20 says, The Jacksons on Friday, The Jackson 5 on Saturday, and Just Michael Jackson on the Sunday. So, big Jackson fan. Big Jackson fan. Uh, be interesting to see um, if the, this was, you know, sometimes you do get these festivals that are a little bit more aimed at kids. Sometimes they are um, a little bit more adult. Um, be interesting to see which way uh, this one went. But so this is just a largely Jackson. So the Jackson, are the Jacksons different to the Jackson 5? Are the Jacksons different to Jackson 5? Let's get, let's, uh, no, let's just, are the Jacksons different to Jackson 5? The Jacksons. Let's have a look. Let's have a look. No, not the Jackson 5. Not the Jackson 5. The Jackson family, the Jacksons. Oh, are these? Oh, okay. The official Jacksons website. Uh, consisting of original members Jermaine Jackson, Tito Jackson, Jackie Jackson, and Marlon Jackson. The Jacksons put on an amazing show that includes all their mega hits made famous with their brother, Michael Jackson. So it's just... So, okay. So this is interesting then. So Friday, we've got the Jacksons, Saul's Michael. Saturday, we've got all of the Jacksons together, plus Michael. And then Sunday... The, so it's kind of a, a nice merging, like ships in the night. But luckily they do have... Which makes Saturday night really the, the headline of headlines. That's the one you're really keen to be there for, because that's all of them. That's all of them. If you just go there on Sunday and you see Michael Jackson doing his iconic thing, you think, yeah, but where's Jermaine? Where's Jermaine? You go on Friday night, you think, oh, where's Mickey? Where's Mick Jackson? Where's Mick? Where's Mick? You want Saturday, you see the whole gang there. I mean, they're going to put on a hell of a show, JRPV20, and I don't think there's anybody who's going to disagree with you on that, so well done. Good choices. TB Douglas has gone with a current and a past. Yowza. Yowza. Current, Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Mariah Carey. It's all the ladies. All the ladies uh, for TB. And then we go with the past. Amy Winehouse, dead now, of course. Whitney Houston, of course, dead also. Uh, and Fleetwood Mac. They're still alive, aren't they? Are uh, Fleetwood Mac dead? Christine McVie. That's a shame. At the age of 79. Gosh. Gosh. Okay. Yeah. So it is. Yeah. There, there is an element of death. A frisson of death. Uh, with all of the past uh, choices. But which one's best? My gosh. Beyonce, Taylor Swift, Mariah Carey, or Amy Winehouse, Whitney Houston, and Fleetwood Mac. I mean, Fleetwood Mac's the only one where you're getting a little bit of Y with the chromosomes in with those double X's. That's interesting. That's interesting. I mm, I think I'd probably go with the past one. Just because I love, you know, you can go your own way. It's interesting to put... Because for me, I would say Fleetwood Mac would be the least likely to be the Sunday headliner. Again, with a lot of these looking to peak on the Saturday... My, uh, Jackson 5, Whitney Houston. I wonder if that's going to continue, but that's lovely choices, TB. Uh, SJ Beck, just Rolling Stones. <laughs> and I don't know whether this is just... whether this is similar to the J JRPB20's choices of... Uh, we're going Rolling Stones Friday, Rolling Stones Saturday, Rolling Stones Sunday. Or... Whether this is a case of type in Rolling Stones, I'm going to press enter to put in who we're going to do for the Saturday. It posted, and then SJ Beck 72 just said, "Fine, whatever. I'm going to, I'm going to. Sure, let's just let Rolling Stones do all three. They are old boys now. I mean, if this is the dream one, maybe it's different eras. Maybe it's like a, a, a 60s Rolling Stones on the Friday. Maybe it's a 2000s Rolling Stone on the Saturday. And then maybe it's, you know, your kind of your 70s, 80s Rolling Stones uh, on the Sunday to really bring it home. Maybe that's the way that we do it. Um, but that, that's interesting. Good choice. Cameraman George, Jay-Z, Queen, Michael Jackson. Another vote for Jacko. 
Wacko Jacko. People still love him. He's the king of pop. Even with, you know, lovely, lovely stuff. That's great stuff. Jay-Z and then Queen and then Michael Jackson. Jay-Z throwing in a little bit of a curveball there. The other two maybe going a bit more. I think Queen's more rock. Michael Jackson's more pop. I mean, it's a varied choice, George. You are a, you are a man of varied tastes. And that's one of the things I like about you. Uh, M. Acton, Friday night, Phil Collins. Sold. Sold for Phil Collins. Excellent choice. Would have also accepted Genesis as another correct answer. But Phil Collins, boom, straight there. Saturday, Jeff Lynn's ELO, the Electric Light Orchestra. We're going happiness. Happiness abounds. Lovely work. And then Sunday, rounding it off with a Stevie Wonder. I don't know if it's possible to win these M. Acton, but that's a real tough lineup to argue with. That's a real tough lineup to argue with. Finishing off with Stevie Wonder. I mean, kicking it off with Phil Collins. I mean, with my proclivities, you'll you'll know I'd be going Phil for Sunday. You you'll know I'd be going Phil for Sunday. But oh my goodness, absolutely fantastic. Well, the 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 assertion that I can make, guys, is that I would happily show up to every single one of these. Absolutely fabulous. Uh, S J Beck seventy two. They've got enough material, but maybe stamina. Absolutely. Absolutely, the stamina might let them down. Great points, and points all round. Let's go on with our final round. It is, of course, Gimme Five. Gosh. Gosh, there's a lot of great acts here. Gosh, there's a lot of great acts. I don't know if Beyonce would agree to being on a Friday. I think there's a lot of... Jay-Z, Beyonce... Phil, he's a team player. He'd go with the Friday. The Jacksons, yeah, that makes sense. Jay-Z and Beyonce. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, the Rolling Stones, you'd say, oh, they wouldn't do a Friday. But they're doing Saturday and Sunday as well. They, they can chill out. Uh, Musing for Gimme Five. Pixar can make powerful, life-affirming, heartwarming films. Make a like, yeah, about anything. Toys, monsters, superheroes, insects, etc. What's a type of a character they haven't yet made a film about that you'd like to see? Feel free to, baby, give it a name. Let's get it in the chat, guys. Let's get it in the chat while we go through these answers. The question was, give me five original Pixar films since 05. Since Ought 5, as it's sometimes referred to. Um, by very important sounding people. Like I say, you had 12 to choose from. You had 12 to choose from, and the 12 are these Ratatouille, Wally, -E, Up, Brave, Inside Out, The Good Dinosaur, Coco, Onward, Soul, Luca, Turning Red, and Cars. I said you couldn't have Cars 2, but Cars 1, my word, absolutely you can have that. Absolutely, you can have that. And you think, well, wasn't Cars 2, didn't that only come out like 2007, 2008? Yeah, they rattle out those Cars films. They really, do. it's just, they do it fast. Speed is the key. They do it like Lightning McQueen himself. Um, so well done if you got those. Well done if you got all five of those or five of these. If you got more than five, please do let me know because I'd love to assign some croc points to you. Uh, but let's go to this. Uh, these musings. Oh, no musings in the chat so far. That's fine. That's fine. How's the bit rate doing? Yeah, that's not too bad. Not too bad. Lovely stuff. TB Douglas. God. All kinds of gods. Greek, Norse, Egyptian, Celtic, etc. It would be called Supreme. TB. TB. That's lovely, lovely work. Oh, can you show the films again? Absolutely. Sorry, I'll leave them going. All kinds of gods. And you've done well. Greek gods. Yeah, absolutely. The pantheon of Greek gods. Some real characters in there. Uh, Norse gods. Lovely. Thor. He's already a box office smash. We've seen that before. He's, he's already got a built-in audience. Egyptian. Maybe a little bit trickier. Maybe a little bit trickier. Um, Cleopatra, of course, not a god, real person. So this is more your Anubises, more your Ra's. Um, 
a lot of scarab beetles going on there. Celtic. I don't know how many Celtic gods are there. How many Celtic gods and goddesses are there? 400. Okay, so they've got a few of them. They've got a few of them. That's interesting. Oh, we've got a lot to learn about those. Oh, we've got a lot to learn about them. Apparently, Celtic deities can belong to two categories, general and local. We'd explore both of them with Pixar. That's lovely. And what, what I like about that, TB, what I think you've done very well there, and quite smartly, quite cleverly, is you've avoided the Christian god, which I think people would get annoyed by, um, and you have avoided uh, the Muslim god, which, you know, you've avoided Muhammad. And that's the main one that I think Pixar would be looking to avoid. Because I think when you do, if you do have a Pixar film with the character of Muhammad in there, um, I think the Muslims are going to have a problem with that. I think they're going to be a, a little bit, um, a little bit narked at you. Um, and you just, you just want to try and avoid that at all costs you just want to try and avoid that because that you know they 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 have been known again i don't want to you know tarnish anybody here but when it comes to depictions of the prophet muhammad um muslims have in the past um uh, taken things quite far yeah i don't want to say overreaction but it's a big reaction at least yeah so, yeah, Pixar, if you are making a film about gods, stick to the old ones that no one believes in anymore. Yeah, just just a suggestion from me and T.B. Douglas. Lovely stuff. Uh, SJ Beck 72, comedy about a pack of helpful dogs with superpowers. Power pooches. Well, SJ Beck 72, absolutely, I believe that you are um perfectly within your rights we go, well, let's go back to main you're perfectly perfectly is this going to work examples okay let's let's try let's try um i think it's a great idea and i think if in many ways this really just backs up that that is a great idea but we do already have the dc league of super pets which is are they all Excuse me. Sorry, that's that's my phone. That's that's really unprofessional. I do apologize about that. Um, we do have the DC League of Super Pets. There's Superman's dog. Wait, let's 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 click in. Let's let's see what we've got. Let's see the um, Bark Kent Super Dog Crypto. Um, we've got um, Ace the Bat Hound, a boxer who gains super strength and invulnerability. Later becomes Batman's pet dog. Uh, Lulu, an evil hairless guinea pig who gains flight and telekinesis. Um, uh, PB, uh, a pot-bellied pig who gains the ability to change her size and scale and admires Wonder Woman. Um, and then we've got Merton McSnurtle slash Terrific What's It, a red-eared slider with poor eyesight who gains super speed. Uh, slider is of course um a, a terrapin um so i think what this says to me sj beck 72 is that you've got a great instinct because your idea has already been done and to some success i mean what's the box office on this baby what's the box office on this uh budget 90 million box office 207.5 million so well done sj beck 72 power pooches i'd watch it i'd watch it uh, JRPV20, my goodness, look at this, look at this paragraph. Set in the familiar world of competitive display team flying. About the newest member to a team of red arrow type planes and pilots who help the ground find, the group find harmony in the aftermath of their competitiveness. It's called Arrow 9. It would feature quirky character similarities between the pilots and their assigned planes. So again, JRPV20, I think you've stumbled upon... Uh, is it this? Yeah, the 2013 American 3D computer anim animated sports comedy film produced by Disney Toon Studios and released by Walt Disney Pictures. It is a spin-off of Pixar's Cars franchise. It's not being produced by Pixar, but the film was co-written and executive produced by Pixar and Walt Disney Animation Studios' then Chief Creative Officer John Lasseter, who was got rid of because of, you know. 
uh, who directed the first two Cars films. The film stars the voices of Dane Cook, Stacey Keach, Priyanka Chopra in her Hollywood debut, um, Brad Garrett, Terry Hatcher, Danny Mann, Julia Louis-Dreyfus, Roger Craig Smith. Who's that? No, don't recognize him. John Cleese, Carlos uh, Alaraqui. Sinbad, Val Kilmer, and Anthony Edwards. Val Kilmer and Anthony Edwards, of course, um, being associated with Top Gun. So I imagine that was probably quite a funny riff on that. So again, again, you have stumbled on a very successful, a very viable idea. Uh, budget, 50 million. Box office, 239 million. So, I mean, if you're going about this dishonestly and you're just trying to cheat, then shame on you. But I'm going to give you the benefit of the doubt and say, absolutely, you're stumbling upon these. And you are having ideas as good as Pixar and Walt Disney Studios. There it is. There it is. Incredible work. Incredible work, guys. Arrow 9. And I like the idea of... I think... Because I think this is just planes whereas your one has the slight wrinkle of its pilots and planes i don't know whether you're going with a kind of a pets type scenario where the pilots have to kind of train the planes or whether it's just you know gets a little bit awkward because the pilot is just you know without really the planes it has to get the planes permission to enter them whatever it might be there's a lot of different dynamics that you could go through um with that and i th um, again i think i'm uh I think I'm on board. Uh, Cameraman George, it would be about aliens and would be called Stranger Danger. Stranger Danger. Interesting. So maybe it's about aliens um, being taught to not uh, engage with humans because they're strange. Yeah. Wasn't that a thing? What's that? Sci-fi animated films. Sky sci-fi. I'm not going to find it. I feel like there was one where it was like it was about an alien film, but it was the twist was that we were with the aliens, and so they were looking at human life in an odd way. But again, a lot of these are really very profitable ideas, guys. Uh, M. Acton film name Lost synopsis. I enjoy the formality of this M. Acton. I'm enjoying it straight off. Um, a group of socks. Oh, who've been separated from their pairs. Oh, we've got a love story straight away. Soulmates, I'm in. Quest is to reunite with their sock bestie. Some are successfully reunited, but others do not. Fortunately, they gain a new lease of life as sock puppets and get a renewed sense of purpose. Mm. M. Acton. M. Acton. Look at this. Straight off. Uh, is there any... Why is it taking so long to load up? That doesn't make any sense. I mean, you can see it though, can't you? You can see it. Lost. Yeah. In the same way as a Toy Story. In the same way as a Flushed Away. Where it's like they're taken away from home and they need to find their way back. I love the sock puppets idea. I love that that brings in an extra element. And it makes it creative as well. And then, you know, you want to talk about cheap merch. Oh, we mass produced it. It's just socks with some googly eyes, yeah? It's socks with some googly eyes. We're charging twenty three fifty, and parents will buy it because it's got the certain type of eyebrows that the kids love from the film. Excellent work. Excellent work. Villabin, Vilebin. Hello. Hi, I wanted to offer promotion of your... Villabin. How do we... How do we... Again, I still need to work out how to get rid of these people. I need to work out how to get rid of these people. Uh, chat settings. That's not chat settings. Chat highlight settings. It wasn't that... Oh gosh, I just don't know how to do it. Turn on shield mode. What does shield mode mean? I don't know. Uh, well, just go away, Villabin. I, do, I don't need promotion. I don't want promotion. 
what makes you think that I, a channel who's got six viewers currently, what would make you think that I would be interested in promotion? How dare you? How dare you sully my quiz? Uh, points all round, guys. Points all round. Points all round. Here we go. Oh, Daniel Swan again. Redeemed 16 second chill dance party. Who's interested in a 16 second chill dance party? Let's see. It's the triumphant return of the 16 second chill dance party. Let's see how this is going to work. I don't know how it's going to work. One, two, one, two, three, four. <laughs> I know I enjoyed that and I hope you guys did too. I know I enjoyed that and I hope you guys did too. Um, so we've got all the points you're gonna get, right? Wrong. <laughs> Underneath my desk, guys, there is a light box. You can see the light box right here. It's not on, so you can't see what's on the light box, but the light box is there. There is a word on that light box, and I need you in this final round. The, the, one of the most important things you can do as an artiste is to connect with other great artists, to become inspired by them, to work with them, collaborate with them. That's super important. And so I need you to read my mind. I know what, I know what word is on, that, on the light box. You just need to let me know what it is. I'm going to give you a topic. It's similar to one that we've done before that we had a lot of fun with. It's three letter words beginning with B. Get them in the chat. Get your guesses in the chat. The more guesses you make, the better chance you have of getting that W. Read my mind, guys. There's a three letter word in here beginning with B. Lovely. Bob. Big, bib, big, bud, B, bob, bum, bed, bop, bid, bit, bog, bad, bet, bat, big, bar, bat. Ban. Bop. Bin. Bot. Bet. Beg. Bow. Bag. Bed. Last one's getting them in, guys. Get them in, guys. Let those last few rattle in. To allow for, of course, uh, difficulties in terms of, uh, what, slight lag from uh, the streaming situation. Bump off, bin bus, boy. I mean, that's a lovely effort, SJBEX72, but each one does have to be in its own chat message. I'll take the first one there, which is bat. Bug, bun, bud, bus. Last couple trickling in here. Last couple is for two extra points, guys. Is that it? Is that it? We all done? Let's turn on this light. Let's turn on the light. The light what? The light what? Turn on the light. The light box. Nobody said box. Zero people said box, even though I'd said box several times just before. No, he said it. That's the way the cookie crumbles, guys. It wouldn't be exciting if people got it every week. It really wouldn't. It adds that extra level. Adds that extra level. The light box. And it's with an X, which makes it cool. X's are cool. Except when they break our hearts. 
I respect all of you for trying there, guys. I respect all of you. I respect the heck out of you all for trying. The heck out of you all for trying. <laughs> Whilst you tot up the scores, guys, I want to remind you that in this quiz, there is no point threshold to being smart. If you've got all the questions right that you realistically could have expected to get, then you are smart. Art doesn't become successful because of the words of others or critics or rotten tomato scores or how much money it makes. No. Art becomes good when somebody, maybe even you, looks at that art and says, yeah, that's great. So if you think your performance today was great, then it was great. No two ways about it. If you're watching this on YouTube, not live, please pop your scores and your musing answers in the uh, in the comments because I would genuinely love to hear how you did. Let's see what we've got. Let's see what we've got. Outsmarted by you, not me. Well, you're not the first. You're not the last, guys. Don't feel bad. Don't feel bad. Uh, George with 12. Well done, George. TB Douglas to 15. Wonderful work. M Acton with 8. Came in late. M Acton with 8. Came in late with that result i'm sure still feeling great uh sj beck 72 with 11 well done you jrpv 20 with 11 well done you which i think means because it has been a reduced viewership today i believe that does mean tv douglas once again on an absolute tear can anybody take her down my word absolutely rolling over the competition there but, as I say, you're only competing against yourself. And I hope you're all feeling pretty happy about your performance here today. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned a little something. I hope you... Uh, uh, I, I don't have the, the thing up. I hope you learned something. I hope you uh, felt creative. And I hope you're improved. I hope you're improved as an artiste and as a person. Um, and I hope that you'll join me next time. Same place, same time. Twitch.tv forward slash I am not me. I am art next Sunday at 1 p.m. Pacific, 4 p.m. Uh, Eastern and 9 p.m. UK time uh, for another episode of I am smart. Another opportunity for you to earn the right to say I am smart. You've all done it this week, guys. You've all done it this week. I was very lucky as I didn't know the festival ones, but was lucky with my guesses. That's how it works sometimes, guys. That's how it works. Luck pays off. Wonderful work there, JRPV20. Thank you so much. Thank you, SJ Beck72, for watching. Thank you, M Acton, for watching. Thank you, TB, for watching. Thank you, JRPV20, uh, for watching. Um, thank you, guys, and I will see you mwah, next week. So there we go, and well done you, whatever your score might be. I definitely think that you are smart, though Rob's not as smart as me. Your art will be better, trust me on this, should be nothing short of sublime. That's why you learn, and don't stop now, I'll see you right here next time. I am smart, 